Hello everybody, and welcome back to The Hunters. Our proud U-boat, U-27, has been in refit for all of October 1939. In the meanwhile, the nations of Europe have been choosing sides. Germany and the Soviet Union have signed a friendship treaty, and the Polish army has surrendered. The Admiral Graf Spee is sinking British shipping off South America. Hitler sued for peace with Britain and France, but the British rejected his offer. There are rumors swirling around the Kriegsmarine that we might invade Norway soon. Also, our colleague, Gunther Prinn, infiltrated the British anchorage at Scapa Flow and sank the battleship HMS Royal Oak. An astounding victory at a symbolic location. Preen is clearly a rising star in the U-Boat Corps. Let's get out there and see if we can do him one better. While U-27 was in refit, we petitioned our superiors to let us choose our own assignment, but it turned out we didn't have enough influence. We were again assigned to the British Isles, but this time not to lay mines. On 1 November, the U-27 sails from Wilhelmshaven for the waters west of Britain. Captain Kramer takes the opportunity of crossing the North Sea to drill his men on crash-diving the submarine. Our transit across the North Sea goes without incident. With Scapa Flow now a riled bee's nest, we swing well north of the Shetland Islands. Even so, we're spotted by British aircraft. Our submarine has a flak gun, but it's almost an afterthought. Standard procedure here is to dive underwater as fast as we can to escape the attacker. The drill's still fresh in the crew's mind, we make it underwater before the British can attack us. Aircraft in the Hunters are terrifying. We got lucky here, but if an aircraft manages to make an attack on a U-boat, it has better than a 1 in 12 chance of just sinking the ship outright. We swing wide, and as we reach our patrol zone, we almost accidentally stumble across a convoy of British merchantmen. Conditions are almost ideal for an attack against an escorted convoy. It's night, we have a full load of torpedoes and a variety of targets to choose from. Of all the ships in the convoy, there are four that offer the best prospects of a hit. Aeus, a Greek steamer of 4,700 tons. Clantar, a tiny 1,200-ton cargo ship. Santa Rita, an 8,400-ton vessel. And finally, Sea Venture, 2,300 tons of British shipping. The escort makes this attack more complicated than when we sank the Minar. I have a couple of choices to make here. Obviously, I have multiple targets I can allocate my torpedoes to. In addition, I could select to attempt to pierce the escort and get into close range with the convoy. If I do so, I may be detected before I can even fire. I can also pull out to long range to make detection less likely after my attack, at the cost of decreased accuracy. I can attack on the surface, or I can submerge. Again, surfacing gives me the benefit of my rangefinder and makes my attacks more accurate, but increases my post-attack probability of being found and attacked by the escort. Finally, if I'm surfaced when I attack, I have the option of spinning around and firing the electric torpedo in my aft tube, again elevating my chance of detection. A surface attack seems to offer the greatest chance of success, and I'll worry about detection later. So as not to tempt fate, though, I'll hold on to my aft torpedo. I fire from medium range, which gives me a base-to-hit number of 7 or lower for each torpedo. I target the Santa Rita, which is larger than the other three ships combined, and fire everything at her. I roll 6, 7, 4, and 7. All hits. The Santa Rita is a large freighter, which means she can absorb a point of damage before sinking. The torpedo does, on average, two points of damage, so I'm all but certain to sink her. Even so, the G7A steam torpedo has a 1 in 3 chance of being a dud in 1939, so I need to check if I was successful. The first torpedo is a dud. The second torpedo is a dud. The third torpedo is a dud. By now I'm starting to wonder if they'll notice that they've been attacked. The fourth torpedo explodes! It does one point of damage to Santa Rita, not enough to sink her, but surely enough to make sure that they notice their ship was hit. The escort turns and charges towards me, and it's time to earn my nickname. Most of the choices that I make to affect my odds of detection are made when I attack, but here I have a choice that I can make, whether or not to exceed test depth. Test depth, sometimes referred to as crush depth, is the deepest that the people who built my boat can guarantee it won't implode like a tin can. Below that, it's a roll of the dice, literally in this case. The U-27's hull is slightly damaged just by going deep, and I need to make a check to find out if the ship implodes. Because the damage is so light, this actually is a can't-fail roll. I'd need to roll a 1 on a 2d6 to suffer any consequences at all. Normally, on a 9 or higher, I'd be found in a depth charge by the escort, but going to test step means that I need to roll a 10 or higher to be detected. In this case, diving the crush depth halves the chance of me being detected, from nearly 16.7% to 8.3%. The escort searches and rolls a 9. Diving to test depth saved me from detection. Now I need to try to salvage this attack. Having escaped the escorts, I follow the now damaged Santa Rita. Despite the fact Santa Rita is moving slower and can't keep up with the convoy, her escorts don't abandon her to her fate, 
and we managed to reload before daybreak and return to attack position. This time I attack from long range, meaning that I need to roll under a 7 after all modifiers. To help make up the difference, I also fire the electric torpedo from my aft tube. The electric torpedoes, or G7Es, are slower and less accurate than the steam torpedoes, so at long range I'll be trying to roll under a 4. They also have a dud rate of 50%, but this is probably my last attack of the patrol. My to hit rolls for this attack are 12, 9, 9, 10, and 10. Clean misses all around. Of course, the escort notices the torpedo tracks, so Crush Depth Kramer earns his nickname again. Again, we get dinged for a point of damage, and this time there's actually a 3% chance of the ship imploding when we go deep. The hull holds, however, and we escape detection easily. So far, Crush Depth Kramer's eponymous tactic is working. The following day, the escort abandons Santa Rita. With no escort, we don't use any more torpedoes. We close to close range and attack with the deck gun. Both volleys hit the freighter, and we finally get our reward. The Santa Rita sinks. Some of my more eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed a few odd things about the Santa Rita. First, she was an American ship, and attacking U.S. shipping at this stage in the war was a major no-no for U-boat commanders. Hitler realized that the U.S. could have a significant impact on the war in Europe if it chose to enter, so anything that might provoke the U.S. into action was strictly verboten. Also, perhaps more surprisingly, the Santa Rita is an anachronism. She won't be launched for another year and a half yet. I choose to believe that Captain Kramer and his crew have, in fact, destroyed a ship full of time-traveling Terminator robots, destined not only to destroy Germany, but to conquer the world and enslave the human race. Or it could be that the Hunters simply doesn't have different merchant ship tables for every month of the war. I leave it to the viewer to decide which of these things is most true for them. Either way, I'm grateful. The voyage back to Willemshaven is uneventful, and we can happily report a successful patrol with no casualties. The U-27 is pretty banged up from all that deep diving, though, and won't be ready to sail again until February. Come back next time for the continuing adventures of Helmet Crush Depth Kramer and the crew of the U-27. Until then, I'm John Brewer, bringing you better gaming through applied mathematics.